Hey Vinyl Community, JT here of Soy Married a Rec Collector. It is a sunny, warm, snow melting afternoon here in Northern Michigan. So what better time than to make a video? Uh, we haven't done videos in a while. We apologize for that. Uh, life just takes over. And uh, currently Heidi Lee is battling a head cold. She's not 100% better, but much better, but not ready to appear on camera. So I thought I'd do a solo video on my own, uh, showcasing some of my recent purchases over the past couple months. It helped to keep the channel active and alive and current. So uh, thanks for tuning in and let's get right back into it. Well, we're gonna get right into it, actually. I'm talking like I'm on the radio in between uh, sets of music. We'll start off with CDs that I've gotten. Some of these are Christmas gifts. Some of them are things I got recently. We'll start off with the Helicopters, Eyes of, Obl Eyes of Ob Oblivion. This is from 2022. The Helicopters are a Swedish band, a very MC5 Detroit rock influenced band. And if I'm not mistaken, they started out with guys that were like in like kind of like thrash metal, death metal bands. And then they slowed it down, but kept the distortion discovered. Hey, we sound a lot like the five. Um, haven't opened it up yet. I, I apologize. You know, I show off a lot of stuff and I'm like, haven't played it yet. Haven't played it yet. But uh, just get so much stuff so quickly sometimes. I don't have time to absorb it all. But uh, Helicopters, Eyes of Oblivion on Psych Out Records or RRR. Another great compilation from the Grapefruit label. This is Bubble Rock is Here to Stay, Volume 2, The British Pop Explosion, 1970-1973. Three discs with a lot of great obscurities. Uh, the pop stuff that... Uh, didn't quite hit back then, or did hit, but had to fight with the heavy rock bands. A lot of interesting stuff on here. It should be uh, fun to listen to. Of course, it's got the Bay City Rollers and things like that. Hot Legs, um, Middle of the Road, you know, those guys. Uh, Brotherhood of Man. Uh, so it should make for some uh, good listening. Another great compilation from Ace of Shell Tommy Productions. This is... Shell's Girls from the Planet Records vaults. Some of the stuff I had on some other uh, compilations of Planet Records and Shell stuff, but this is all girl things. Um, no real big names on here that you would probably recognize. The most well-known song on here is a cover of the Brian Wilson composition, Guess I'm Dumb by Danny Sheridan. Um, some of this came out on immediate, it's like Van Lenten, so that should be good. You know, I like the British stuff. A CD reissue of an obscure surf music album from 1963, I believe, on Vault. This is Oldies, Goodies, and Woodies uh, with uh, tracks from the Challengers, Tom Star and the Galaxies, and um, some obscurities, which might be just studio uh, things like the Beach Girls, the Busy Bodies, and we got the Vibrants and the Gladiators. Um, don't know what, oh, it's on a central media group. I don't know the source of it. It's not a bootleg, it is legit. But a rather obscure album. This is Albert King, Funky London. Um, you all know who Albert King is. British blues, not British, blues guitars. Blues guitars, played a flying V, left-handed, no pick. Um, this stuff was recorded uh, between 70 and 74. has a rare 45 sounds with six previously unreleased selections. Many with backing by the Barquets. Um, I forgot why I had this on my Amazon wishlist. Like I always say, I probably heard this on WFMU somewhere, probably on Michael Shelley's show. Uh, I think the most well-known track on here is this version of James Brown's Cold Sweat. And um, I think the rest of them are all originals. Got this one because I saw my friend Tommy uh, picked up one of the original albums recently. This is Del Shannon with two of his mid-60s Liberty Records. This is my bag and total commitment. Uh, I picked it up because a lot of interesting cover versions on here. He does the Raiders kicks, lightning strikes, when you walk in the room, oh pretty woman. Uh, everybody loves a clown under my thumb. Uh, the where the action is theme, action. Uh, time won't let me, summer in the city. So this should be fun. This was a used thing I got off of eBay. This was an impulse purchase because I have this on CD, but uh, the horrible 1987 
new bass and new drum tracks. This is Frank Zappa and the Mothers, Greasy Love Songs, which is the Ruben and the Jets album, but from the original tapes with the original mix. I have a copy of the original album. You'll see one day when we get back to doing the records. It'll take a long time. Um, with some bonus cuts, some single versions, maybe some unreleased things, and liner notes by Cheech Marin. I uh, got this really cheap on a deep discount. It happened to pop up in an ad. I said, oh, I need that. More new surf music, or fairly new surf music. This is from 2019, hot rod music. The Slot Rods, Surf and Glue on Weirsville Records. Um, can't wait to pop this open and play. It's got lots of great uh, song titles like, uh, you know, Cheater Slicks, Herman's Headers, which is probably about the Munsters, Johnny Zombie, Top Fuel Drag Coop. Uh, don't know where they're from. They do have a Facebook page, so check them out. I got this from the great Double Crown Records site. And the last CD, this came out recently. No, this came out all the way back in 2017. Finally collecting all of the Gollywogs recordings on one CD. Gollywogs, of course, became Creedence Clearwater Revival. And they had to wear ridiculous costumes back then, those hats. But on the front, they look pretty well scrubbed and clean. Um, has all the Scorpio singles, the early fantasy stuff, and a lot of unreleased things. And um, I don't know if some... No, there's no Tommy... Forgetting the Blue Velvets on here. And uh, let's see, you got two versions of You Can't Be True. I think some of this is unreleased. There's an instrumental and an Action USA spot. So that's it for new CDs. Next, 45s. Next up, all of the 45s I have purchased recently or even had given to me or found somewhere. Um, I'm always buying stuff off the North. Well, not always, but quite often. I buy stuff from Norton Records because they always have a sale going on. And it's great stuff, cheap. Uh, this first one um, came out fairly recently in the past few years. Uh, the story behind this is in the 1960s, there was a budget label album by the Surfsiders called The Beach Voice Songbook, which is so wonderfully inept. Some people say it's great. And of course, it appeals to the people who run Norton Records. So they got some friends together, whoever they are. And did some singles as the new Surfsiders and did some later Beach Voice songs in this Surfsiders style. And according to legend, some people say Lou Reed and John Cale are part of the Surfsiders because they worked for Pickwick Records and did, you know, quick budget albums. Not confirmed or anything, but this is on Norton, popular demand series, the new Surfsiders, the top side. They're doing the Beach Boys song Kokomo, which makes that terrible song into a really fun, goofy track. Then on the flip side, they do Good Vibrations, of course, in the same style, which I don't really want to make fun of Good Vibrations, but to hear it done in this goofy style, is, <laughs> it's really fun, a lot of silly stuff. This one, some of you out there probably... Um, in the Philadelphia area, in the South Jersey area, knew of Jerry Blavitt, a uh, famous DJ who uh, passed away recently. He actually appears on an episode of The Monkees. Uh, he made several singles. I picked this one up. I've had it on my eBay watch list forever, and it finally took the poor guy dying before I got a copy. Um, this came out at 65 on Favor. This is Discophonic Walk, credited to Jerry Blavitt and the Young Teenagers. And it was reissued a year later on Cameo. The flip side is called Back to School One More Time, which also appears as a B-side, I think, on some of his other singles. But a really cool, heavy dance track with some cool drums. Another one from Norton. Now, this is interesting. This is one of their Norton singles where it has two, an, one artist on one side and one on the other. I bought it for this side. It said Wild Track by Guitar Frank. I said, that's got to be interesting. And it says on there, Mullen Blue Snopper. And when I got it, I played this side. I'm like, didn't really hit me much. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. It's wild. It, it's not really knocking me out. But then I flipped it over for this other side that's described as a stop and blues mauler too. And the top of my head blew off. This is My Testament by Big Brown and the Gamblers. I can't find any information on Big Brown and the Gamblers much on the internet. I checked 45cat.com. Besides this being listed... There's a single from the Netherlands listed by a Big Brown and the Gamblers, but I don't know if it's the same band, because this sounds like wild, art, crazy piano-led boogie-woogie R&B, uh, the kind of song to make you want to shave your dog. 
This one, I was browsing eBay for anything about um, this 1960s custom Dodge pickup called the Diora that the Alexander Brothers out of Detroit customized. It was made into a Hot Wheels in uh, the late 60s. And um, I, have, I have some stuff by this band. I didn't know they had this single. These are the Volcanoes. I believe they're out of Detroit. This is Diora, backed with Drums Fell Off a Cliff on Estrus from 1996, both killer surf instrumentals with a Hot Wheels themed cover there. Oh, lately, well for the past couple weeks, maybe more a month, Heidi Lee and I have been on a Dobie, many lives of Dobie Gillis kick. We watch a episode or two before we go to bed. Um, and in fact, I forgot to show off my t-shirt for this show. There's Maynard with life goals. But um, the guy who played Doby, Dwayne Hickman, they tried to make him into a recording star. He did an album on Capitol, which he himself says, not very good. I've seen it. I'm probably going to get a copy. Um, but before Doby, he was on the Bob Cummings show. And they had him do a single just about as the Bob Cummings show ended. And um, this is it on ABC Paramount from 59 or 58. School dance. Back with Pretty baby O, Which is your typical written by adults. Hey, let's make some crappy rock and roll song for the kids. It's a wild, fun record. Dwayne Hickman says he himself, he couldn't sing. They had, when he made the Capitol album, they had a piece takes together. And it's that's really bad. But this... Actually came with a picture sleeve, which I don't have, obviously, but a uh, a really goofy, fun record. Somebody wrote, oh, somebody wrote on it. Somebody named Terry Sutton owned the record before me. Yeah, School Dance, back with Pretty Baby O by Dwayne Hickman, just as the Bob Cummings show ended and, and uh, Adobe Gillis was starting. Well, these next few I pulled out of the 45s new arrivals at our local. I did, didn't know anything about them. Uh, not really my bag, but not bad records. This is Dee Dee Warwick, Dion's sister on Atco. I believe this is from 69. She's backed up by the Dixie Flyers. Uh, I'm Only Human, backed with, if this was the last song, White Label Promo. It was owned by Patty and Susie Shear. Uh, kind of Southern Soul, not upbeat, but not a bad record, not quite my thing. This next one, I've always knew of this band, British band, kind of from the glam era. Never knew nothing about them. I saw the single for a buck, so I thought I'd try. Cockney Rebel, Sebastian, backed with Rock and Roll Parade. Didn't really knock me out. I think Sebastian was your hit. Um, maybe I got to hear some more stuff by them, and I like it. This didn't really do anything for me. It's Steve Harley. Of course, I find something goofy. <laughs> On Crimson Dynasty Records, the only record on this label from 1976, I'm the Greatest, Ali's Bicentennial Song by Muhammad Ali. I found this in the New Arrivals. B-side is called Don't Mess With Ali, an instrumental. Um, played it once. Of course, it's, you know, a lot of his braggadacho, braggad, um, just goofy fun. And it's a promo. <laughs> Um, now, way back when I worked in the record store, my friend Corey and I discovered we got some promos from the Fat Possum label. Didn't know what it was. We, we were kind of aware it was blues. And there was this one, we looked at the cover, like, what the heck is this? This looks nuts. And he's like, yeah, put it on so we can go about our work. We put the CD in. I went one way. I went. He went the other. The music started. We both stopped like, huh? It was Elmo Williams and Hezekiah Early, their album called Takes One to No One, which is just loud, almost inept, fuzzy, crazy blues. And Fat Possum did a series of singles with their artists. I found this one. Uh, this time it's credited to the Elmore Williams. It's <laughs> in this series called For the Love of Jesus on Fat Possum. Top side is hooping and hollering. The other side's gonna leave, taken from the album on Fat Possum. If you like real crazy, inept, I don't know if it's inept, but you know, not exactly, you know, classy. But a uh, gut bucket, up tempo blues. Check out Elmo Williams and Hezekiah Early's album. Oh, I forgot. found this in there. I never, don't know, no, really, didn't know what it was. I thought I'd take a chance. The Figs on, gee, what label is this on? I think they're from Jersey. It's not, it's not on the M label. Clear vinyl. 
top sides go before the B side called Let's Get Arrested, um, produced by Andy Chernoff of the Dictators. Flip side was recorded in South River, New Jersey. Top side was recorded at Coyote Studios in Brooklyn, of course. Kind of power popish, punk popish. Not a bad record. This one I bought to play on our radio show at Christmas. Because of the blizzard, we missed our Christmas show, so it's going to have to wait till next year. Because I have a listener, Pat, who was in Vietnam, and I always like to play stuff like this for him to kind of lightly tease him. This is on Roulette Records. Derek Roberts, There Won't Be Any Snow, Christmas in the Jungle, on Roulette. And uh, it's about a, a soldier in Vietnam writing a letter back home about Christmas. Kind of maudlin. <laughs> This one, I was originally watching a copy of this on eBay with a picture sleeve, but then the guy took it down or somebody else grabbed it before me. Uh, so I found a copy without a picture sleeve and it just looked real interesting. And then when I got it, it's like, eh, it's just okay. Uh, I think this is from 65 or 66. Mo, Adrian and the Sculptors with Love Train backed with Shotgun, white label promo on Columbia. Uh, R&B Soul, of course Shotgun I think is a Junior Walker track, Top Side is an original by them, and it just I just found it to be okay, not bad, just okay. This one's been not great shape, and I had to write a note on there because it says the label, because the labels are reversed. Um, this was originally released on some other label, then A&M picked it up, but as you can see, my copy's got a bad label, but it plays fine. This is Lynn LaSalle. With Randy Ramjet and Taking Life Easy. And I had to write on there that the labels are reversed. I guess that's why I got it so cheap. Uh, originally released on some small label, like I said, before AM picked it up. And uh, kind of sounds like wild garage punk psych with a bit of a British psych feel. Um, I can't think of any way to describe it. You just got to find this record. It is really good. Um, I don't think it's been comped either. Uh, my friend Richard Sabello of the Music Bordello on TopShelfOldies.org played uh, this track on his show. It's another Norton Records release. It's actually an EP. It's um, Come Monkey with Geno Washington and the Atlantics. One side has two Geno Washington songs, which I already have, and the Atlantics back him up with a vocal group called the Rochelles, which makes me laugh because that's my sister's name, and the Rochelles later became Dawn of Tony Orlando and Dawn. But I bought this for the two instrumentals on the flip that the Atlantic Studios, Heartburn and Monkey Tree, particularly Heartburn, because that's the one my friend Rich played. So uh, that, out of Detroit, that's a really cool song. New music from, they've been going for several years, the M. Brooks, here they're credited as Lay M. Brooks, um, on Disc Rogue label, to look like the French Vogue, Disc Vogue um, label. Top side is an original called Black Hatted Lady, and the B-side is In the Sky, originally done by, uh, oh, what's that man's name? The Dark, uh, very rare, heavy, early 70s, heavy British. I forget the name of their album. It's like 500 copies. Um, black vinyl. Yeah, In the Sky is, yeah, it doesn't say. I can't remember now. Anyway. Yeah, Dark. Oh, can't, I'm blanking on the name of the record, but you'll figure it out. Oh, this was cool. This is an R&B single. These guys actually had several singles that are good. Now, you all know the Monkees. More of the Monkees album. That's a songbook, Heidi, yet. Um, more of the Monkees in Monkey Fandom has one of their worst songs in there, if you want to call it a song. It's a recitation by Davy Jones called The Day We Fall in Love. But before the Monkees did it, this group, The Bandwagon, did it on The Day We Fall in Love. But it kind of sounds like the times of So Much in Love fame. And it's an, it's an example of a group taking an absolutely crappy song and making it quite enjoyable. And this is on Epic from 1967. I really think it predates the Monkees version. This I bought because I'm a fan of the television show. And I wanted to play this for my friend Alex at WMFO, who also loves the show. This is jazz vocalist Terry Thornton with a vocal version of the Route 66 theme. And uh, like a friend of ours said, uh, he said, it's like finding out the Bonanza theme had lyrics. But this is a white label promo on Columbia. Flip side is every time I think about you. And I guess they had somebody in the mailroom had to put a new timing sticker because all the copies I see have this sticker on here. It says two minutes. It must have been printed wrong at first. And um, 
it's not bad. It when I played it, it kind of felt like the vocals were added much later. Don't really connect with the music. You'd have to hear it to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is a funny one. I couldn't believe I found this. I knew he made records. I didn't know he made records this far back. And I don't care. I like westerns. I'm on a bit of a gun smoke kick. Dennis Weaver played Chester on Gunsmoke in the early years. Uh, this is Chicken Mash backed with the Apes on Eva Records. Um, Chicken Mash is like a novelty song, a bit of a country hillbilly-ish bopper where he sings like a farmer and he goes out to his uh, barn chicken coop to find all the chickens dancing, doing the mash. Uh, I forget what the Ape side sounds like. Um, but uh, just a cool, goofy novelty. I know he made records later uh, in the late 60s, early into the 70s during his McLeod years. In fact, there's one album where he's uh, in his McLeod getup on the front. But uh, I think he's got like one or two more from this period, too. In fact, I have a friend at work who kind of reminds me of him. I always go up to him and say, how's the leg, Chester? He don't get it. He don't know what I'm talking about. And last, this was a... Val oh, some of those CDs were Christmas gifts at the start there. Uh, this was my... One of my Valentine's Day gifts from Heidi. This is The Who with a seven inch, multi seven inch single version of their last studio album, which was from 2019, simply called Who. Uh, splits the album out on over the course of several seven inch singles and comes with a live CD, The Who in Kingston, an all acoustic show. So it's just Roger and Pete. Um, has a small insert. Not much to write home about there. Uh, but all the singles in nice hard sleeves. They're all black vinyl. Uh, cover art splits up the art. You know, each square of the album cover art gets its own sleeve. And of course, the record nerdiness. I saved the hype sticker. So this is a neat thing to have. I'm looking forward to listen to... Uh, the live so you can see how the acoustic things sound so that does it for 45s next up we're going to hit the lps okay like i said now the lps of course i'm not prepared i got them on the floor these first couple come from our local uh, we stop in there every once in a while i picked up some cheap ones i remember seeing this years ago i think when it first came out but i really wasn't into the band at the time but um, I saw it in there cheap. I so said, I kind of like to have that now. You know all the songs on here I already have. These are the Turtles with a very early Rhino release, 1978. It's called The Turtles 68. It's basically an EP. Um, four songs at 45 RPM. And it's got a cool picture of the Turtles on the beach at the time. And right there is Dean Torrance of Janet Dean. I guess he had started Kitty Hawk Graphics. Maybe he was working with the band. Um, has To See the Sun, Surfer Dan, the last thing I remember, the last thing I knew, and The Owl. I think The Owl is the only one I didn't have on a CD anywhere, so I, I, I grabbed this. Super cheap. Um, 1978 on Rhino. Interesting to read that some of the stuff was recorded in September 68 at Chess Studios in Chicago. New York City, Olmsted Sound, and also Gold Star in Hollywood. Next up, I collect comedy records. You know, they, they can be outdated, especially ones from the 80s. But this guy always made me laugh. This is Billy Crystal with Marvelous. <laughs> it was just a few dollars. I go through their comedy section. So, you know, I got to listen to it some more. I remember us having the single from this record at our store um, where it's, oh, what is it called? With uh, It's Christopher Guest and Billy together as... Willie and Frankie, and they had this thing called I Hate When That Happens, where they talk about the most ridiculous things. Oh, I hate when that happens. And of course, it has Sammy Davis Jr. parodies, his Fernando Lamas parodies, and uh, some live stuff too. And this is on A&M from 1985. I can get records back in the sleeve super quick. That like some folks. Watch this. Check it out. This is years of record store. You grab it, you bend it a little, make a, a lump, a bump, boop, right in. You don't have to wrestle with it. Next up, this was this is from 1967, early 67. Gary Lewis and Listen on Liberty. 
Now, the story I read that was like, this was recorded when he was on home from leave from the army. And he did a record while he was on leave. <clears throat> and it's quite a good pop psych record, Touches of Psych. Um, of course, these types of records, they get rediscovered like, oh, it's his pet sounds. I don't think you can compare it to pet sounds, but it's in that same kind of genre and feel. Um, arranged and conducted by Jack Nietzsche, so it has that, you know, Los Angeles uh, sunshine pop feel. And it's also interesting, he does the Love and Spoons of all six, six o'clock. And I think also what I read, he does the Turtles, She'd Rather Be With Me, which may predate the Turtles version. And um, this was inexpensive, and it's a, a quite a nice little pop gem. Um, does Tim Harden's Reason to Believe, Don't Make Promises. Uh, I think the most well-known track on here is Jill, which was the single. You do this, you do a bump, get it in there, whammo, you're done. This is a band, I always want to like them more, and I do like them. I just, I can't go bananas over them like a lot of folks do, but I do... They, like the Jefferson Airplane, they don't knock me out like they do other people. This is Moby Grape from 1968, and wow. Um, got, you know, you you know, probably all know the story. They have had a horrible manager, Matthew Katz, who owns the rights to the name and wants millions of money, ripped them off. Sundays put out CDs of the original albums. They got taken off the market almost immediately. Uh, they're very hard to get. But uh, this is an original on Columbia gatefold we'll show the label columbia 2i stereo if you want to go nuts owned by somebody named todd hargraves is written on the label there um most well-known tracks in here can't be so bad and um what's the other one hmm oh it's on the other record the, the grape jam record has the song called Never, which Robert Plant lifted the lyrics from for Since I've Been Loving You on Led Zeppelin 3. So, uh, yeah, I have a CDR of this I got somewhere. I downloaded once years ago. But it's nice to have my own copy now. Um, Motorcycle Irene is another track. It's played a lot on Little Steven. <clears throat> I think that's from 68. Got this one on eBay. I've been reading... Who told me about this record? I think my friend James Porter down in Chicago told me about this because he finds all kinds of odd records like me and my friend Richard Sabello do. Um, this was after his hit-making days were kind of over. Joey D and the Starlighters on Jubilee Records from 66. This is Hitsville. I picked this up because he covers the Count Five psychotic reaction. Doesn't really hold a candle to the Count Five's version, but it's kind of cool in a, a novel way like... Wow, someone's covering it. He also does a lot of covers on here, like Reach Out, I'll Be There, Hold On, I'm Coming, Guantamanera, uh, The Hair of My Chinny Chin Chin, Cherry Cherry, Land of a Thousand Dances. Um, but there's also a really good track on here written, co -written, written by Billy Vera and Chip Taylor called It's Got You, which is a kind of a bit of a psych feel to it, if you want to describe it that way. Um, Jubilee, Black Label. Uh, my friend Richard Sabella once attended an oldie show or met joey d backstage and my friend was doing he was doing community theater but joey d came to do an oldie show somewhere in the 80s and was still dressed like it was the 70s with like bedazzled um bell bottoms but he met joey d when he was doing dinner theater he said he was a nice enough guy he just seemed a little sad so this is a an odd one ah christmas gifts this was a christmas gift I really, really wanted this one. It was kind of pricey, so I was like, I'll hold off. It'll show up somewhere. They had it in our local store, but it was big bucks. A record store day thing from 2022. And I feel bad. I still haven't cracked this open and played it. Like I've been saying, stuff comes in faster than I can get to it. Or was this for my birthday? The Paul Butterfield Blues Band. The original Lost Electra Session. Some of this has been released already. Some of it hasn't. I really wanted to get this because my friend was my friend Ron Sanchez out in Montana was telling me how good the unreleased stuff was. The um, early version of East West on here, but it's called Love Song, I think it is. And I really because East West is one of my favorite tracks by the Butterfield Blues Band. Just a great, great song. Um, side one, sides one, two, and three, I think, have only been released on a CD. So uh, I can't wait to dig into this one day soon. 
yeah, I think I can't remember if this was Christmas or birthday. I know this was Christmas. Did I need this? No. But the what's app, uh, the what, what the hell is the whatnot app or whatever that Heidi's using, the what's app for sales and buying records. Um, this is from 2016. Two LP set of the My Generation album by The Who. Uh, bonus stereo tracks, some of which are on the Super Deluxe box set, some of which might not. So it is a bit of an essential purchase for a Who nut like me. Uh, again, still haven't busted her open. Uh, 2016 on Polydor, made in Germany. If that matters to any of you nerds. There's another one she got on the Whatnot app. Yeah, Whatnot, not WhatsApp, Whatnot. <sighs> <laughs> Um, just looked interesting. She knows I can dig some heavy funk and soul. Dyke and the Blazers. I got a message, Hollywood 68 to 1970, uh, on craft recordings. This looks really interesting. Let me get that little in there. Hype sticker. There's the back cover. Uh, let a woman be a woman, let a man be a man. I think it's the most popular song on here. Oh, cool. It's got a radio spot for somebody, a station called WUFO. That might be cool. Covers It's Your Thing. So this would be a nice listen. This is another one. One of my friends online must have mentioned this or I came across it. You know, this is a man kind of helped start rock and roll. He was still making records in the late 60s, early 70s, all through his life. Um, not really having hits. Had a bit of revival because of American Graffiti and Happy Days. Bill Haley in the comments on Janice Records from 1970, Traveling Band. The title track is the Creedence Clearwater Revival song. But my friend Richard Sabello said that it might not be Bill Haley singing that because he had somebody else singing in the band at the time. And I play it, it kind of sounds like him, kind of doesn't sound like him. He also covers Who'll Stop the Rain, but on the record it's titled Who's Been Stopping the Rain. And then it's also got a song. Ooh, where'd it go? Oh, the song, I Wouldn't Have Missed It for the World, which was like a country song, kind of country bopper about getting really, really drunk the night before and the next morning being reminded of what happened and he can't remember it, but I Wouldn't Have Missed It for the World. Um, then there's like a Rock Around the Clock themed uh, kind of remake called Dance Around the Clock. Does games people play, Boney Maroney, me and Bobby McGee. Uh, as you can see, it's a bit on the damaged side, but I got on eBay, really cheap. Janice label. This is from 1970. Um, I think it actually came out in Sweden first on the Sonic label. Um, discography for Bill Hill in the comments is a little confusing at that time. And the last one in LPs, I saw Steve show this. And then um, I was like, yeah, it looks curious. I think I'll look that up, see if I, what else is, let's see if it interests me. And I saw it on Amazon. It was like really cheap, like $10.99. This is... The Nat Turner Rebellion, Laugh to Keep from Crying, some rare first ever full length release of a Philly soul and RB group that broke up before their first LP can be completed. Many sought after singles. Um, like again, I haven't opened this or played it. It's from Vinyl Me. It was like $10.99 on Amazon. But um, it has something that I think Steve's didn't have. It was like a, it's advertised like a small booklet in there and an extra seven inch there's the brothers on the back so this should be cool because i'm trying to plan doing an old r&b soul special on my radio show soon but i just haven't got to i'm still doing rock and roll but um yeah that's the lps and that does it for this installment of soy mario rec collector i put on my sweater because it's a little chilly in here this is my other valentine's day gift from heidi I quite like a nice sweater Kind of makes me feel like a bit like uh, Steve Douglas on My Three Sons with a cardigan. But um, hope you enjoyed the video. We hope to be back soon in the next couple of weeks. Getting back to the cubes. Doing the real interesting stuff. Um, Got to say hello to all the videos. The other guys we watch all the time. I I showed up in one of Steve Carlson's latest videos. When he came to visit in the shop at RPM Records here in Traverse City. I thought he had dumped that footage and didn't use it. But he's actually like a lot of us behind and you know stuff he films ends up being posted weeks and weeks later um steve there's a record show coming up in manistee in may maybe you should slap on some skin bracer clean yourself up come up and go to a record show hang out and um yeah that's about it so take care of yourselves and we'll see you on the next video